Welcome back to The Pulse, your guide to global health. Chagas disease is the wallflower of neglected diseases. It's spread by a parasite and it causes deadly heart damage. There's no good test for it and no vaccine either. It gets little attention and yet 15 million people across Latin America are infected. But now, a new drug is bringing new hope to the victims of Chagas disease. We went to Bolivia to take a look. The mountains of southern Bolivia. Some 15 million people in South America are infected with the Chagas parasite. About 4 million of them will die young. It's a human tragedy and an economic disaster. The cost of the disease in Bolivia alone is estimated at well over 100 million US dollars a year. Working with the government, they're delivering drugs to children carrying the parasite that causes Chagas disease. The drug kills the parasite. Without it, many of these children will die in middle age, and many of the girls will pass the infection on to their own children. Half the children in this school are infected. In children, uh, the drug eliminates the parasite. Uh, normally, when the parasite is still in blood, it's easier to eliminate it. The problem is when the parasite it has been a long time in the body and it's uh, already in the, in the heart or in other parts of the body, so it's uh, more difficult to eliminate it. Some call it the assassin bug, others the kissing bug. It bites at night near the mouth and eyes when its victim is asleep. Here in Bolivia, they call it vinchuca. This is the proboscis for sucking blood here. Here, and then when, when the vinchucas is hungry, the proboscis is uh, like an elephant. <laughs> but I think he's okay. He's not very hungry. The vinchuca carries the Chagas parasite. When it takes blood, it defecates on the skin, leaving parasites behind. They get into the bloodstream through scratching or rubbing the eyes. And when the vinchuca drinks from an infected person, it picks up parasites and passes them on to others. It's the innocent vector of a blood-borne disease. These are the parasites that do the damage. A few millionths of a meter long, wriggling under a high-powered microscope like so many tiny worms. Called trypanosomes, they're seeking out cells in which they can reproduce. In this image, they're inside a human cell, beating against the walls, about to break free. In doing so, the cell dies. It's the destruction of cells in the heart and the intestines that causes Chagas disease. Dolly is 12. Like most infected children, she has no symptoms of the disease. The parasites are in her bloodstream. It will be years before they invade her vital organs. So for now, they're vulnerable to the recommended drug, benznidazole. The Bolivian government provides it free for children, but it's 30 years old and there isn't a pediatric version. Dolly is weighed to gauge the correct dose. For smaller kids, the pills are cut into halves and quarters. It may seem rough and ready, but for children up to 14 years old, it works. For adults in whom the parasites have infected the heart or intestines, the drug is less effective and it can have severe side effects. Felix Rios has been told that he has just a little while to live. The Chagas parasite has invaded his intestines. His entire large intestine has been surgically removed. His doctor, Simon Furogue, runs the local hospital. Aparentemente, los, uh, la gente enferma de Chagas he says he rarely sees people in the final stages of Chagas disease. They're typically in their 40s, they're working in the fields, and they collapse and die suddenly of a heart attack. In this region, says the doctor, there aren't many old people. Most die early. The solution to Chagas disease may lie a world away in California. Victoria Hale has spent much of her life developing new drugs. Now she set up the Institute for One World Health with money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation 
to research, develop and market new drugs for the major tropical diseases. The San Francisco company Celera has given her the rights to develop one of their drugs specifically for Chagas disease. They've called it K777. Jim McCarrow at the University of California and Jim Palmer from Celera are working on the drug. One World Health will perform the development and safety studies needed to approve this new drug for people. It's a tragic disease because of the number of people affected and the fact that, you know, it can lead to a very serious type of heart failure um, with a very high mortality rate. And then compounded is the fact that there hasn't been any new drug for this disease literally in decades. And the drugs we have now um, have serious problems in terms of side effects. Celera originally developed K777 for the treatment of cancer. It's in a class of compounds called protease inhibitors. It was Jim McCarrow who realized it might kill parasites. What you're seeing in there is the, partly the free living form of the parasite, which is moving around very fast. And then you can see the host cells, which you can imagine would be your cells, with some of these little fast squiggly things attaching to and actually going into. So that's exactly what would be happening uh, if you got infected and these got into your bloodstream and homed into your heart muscle cells. <laughs> so you remember from the microscope these little squiggly things. And what happens with the drug is that there's a, there's a little highway that operates within the parasite cell and along this highway, the cars that are traveling are proteins that have to get out here and then follow the highway back to here. And it turns out that what your drug does is it actually kind of puts up a roadblock in this highway so that now all of this protein that was supposed to get down here just backs up like a big traffic jam and that turns out to be toxic, in other words, kill the parasite. So it's really um, sort of a surprising traffic jam along a, a, a protein trafficking highway mm -hmm. um, that's the, actually the effect of K777. Back in Bolivia, the coordinator of the National Chagas program says that when it comes to treatment, children must come first. This area is the worst affected in the country. Estoy convencida que en el programa de Chagas debemos concentrar nuestros esfuerzos en los niños y en las niñas porque son el futuro de nuestro país. Si logramos librar a nuestros niños del Chagas, así podremos asegurar un futuro mejor. Congenital Chagas disease is a major concern. Mothers at the antenatal unit at San Juan de Dios Hospital are routinely tested for the parasite. The doctors say that around one in ten of the babies here are born with the disease. Some are so badly infected in this the acute phase they don't survive. Others show no symptoms. The head of the neonatal unit has pioneered treatment of babies with Chagas. When a baby tests positive, he says, the medical team has to act quickly to ensure it gets medicine before the mother leaves hospital. One of the principal problems, seguramente debe ser in todas las maternidades de Bolivia, es que la alta es precoz. ¿Por qué es precoz? Porque el número de camas es insuficiente y hemos tenido algunas veces casos de diagnóstico que sabíamos que estaba enfermo y ya se habían ido y no hemos podido recuperar. Entonces, con esa experiencia ahora hacemos que nuestra maternidad por lo menos esté en 48 horas, o sea, que nos den tiempo a la toma de muestra y a tener un resultado, como para decir, bueno, pueden irse sin ningún problema. While the neonatal unit is coping, the head of the hospital's blood bank tells Nilda he's facing a crisis. Sangre en el hospital para, un, para prepararse para un prequirúrgico, pero la paciente necesitaba una unidad sola. The blood bank's fridge is all but bare. 
This is a story that will be repeated day after day until scientists find a reliable, safe and cheap drug that kills the parasites in adults. To its credit, the government of Bolivia, like those of other South American countries, has launched massive spraying campaigns to kill the bugs and housing improvement programs to cover the adobe bricks with cement to seal the cracks. This house was sprayed a year ago. The eggs, little white specks, long dead, show where they were breeding. It's reckoned that if the number of infected houses in a community can be reduced to below 3%, then the chances of being bitten by a bug carrying a parasite are so low, the disease can be considered under control. In many regions, it is working. The disease is being brought under control, but it's not enough. It is never the case that one intervention is enough to, to eliminate disease. So there need to be vector control programs, uh, new housing programs. There needs to be drug to cure people who have disease, acute disease and chronic disease. Uh, it would be wonderful in the near future to, to think about a Chagas vaccine. That's really the way to go. Until now, talk of new drugs for Chagas and other major tropical diseases has been fruitless. But with the backing of a non-profit pharmaceutical company, those drugs might just become a reality. That's all for this edition, but join us again next time on The Pulse.